Hey, hey, hi ho, I am IT PhD and today I'll tell you how to work in Ghidra, how to disassemble something, how to find some bugs or improve performance of your application. So this is a tool which can put your binary code to assembly code and also after you have assembly code it's also could transform it in pure C. So if you know C language and if you have any binary program you actually lucky guy because or gal because you could have it uh, in quite readable way. So how to start? First of all you need to download Ghidra. So uh, you go to Google and uh, go to GitHub, Ghidra software. So you just get latest build here and it will be kind of zip file. So you download a zip file, uh, you unpack it and then you simply uh, have such folder, folder like this. So you unzip it and you need to start this file gidra run.bat. So after you will start it, you will have kind of such window. So let me start from the scratch. So you will have such window and here you should start a new project, create a new project. There are two types of projects, shared projects and non-shared. Shared it's if you want to work with your binary file together with your friends or colleagues. Or if you want to play alo uh, alone, you could choose non-shared. So I, I work mainly in shared project right now with together with other people. Uh, it should be hosted on server, but yeah, you could, if you plan to go alone, create non-shared project. Then you should uh, kind of put it somewhere. Uh, please note that this application Ghidra it's in Java that's why it's a bit slow it's slower than for example uh, it's slower than IDA IDA yeah so let's create test folder and we will put our project here just test project that's it so we created our project and now we could put here some uh, binary file for example, let's take calculator from Windows, simple calculator, so it's, it's open source software by the way. And you just drag and drop it here and then you could choose format, you could choose uh, language, so if you, there are plenty of different options uh, could be, yeah, so here we have not too much. So, and then you click OK and program Ghidra starting to chew binary file then you click ok and now you could double click at the binary file calcaxe and ghidra will start when you just started it will uh, suggest you to analyze exe file so you could do it actually it's very good thing to do because if you will do it it will decompile it uh, to uh, to something readable also you will have uh, kind of uh, a lot of information. So you always could do it later in the menu. There is a uh, after analyze calc exe. And here you could choose different tools f for analysis. You could just select everything if you just play around and click analyze. It will take some time. If your program like more than three megabytes, it will it could take like a, an hour sometimes. Depends on your PC. So uh, let's uh, now I open my project and uh, I'll show you some stuff. So this is a project which I work. It's a very old game like Rage of Mages 2. Maybe you heard about this game. So I'm trying to make it better for multiplayer. I have a server in Rage of Mages 2 and uh, I um, work on, on this game. So this is a binary file server file of this game and uh, we already disassembled it so there are plenty of uh, stuff here and the most useful first thing which you could do here it's to make a nice UI 
what's cool about Ghidra, it's open source and it's constantly improving, is that you could make any UI which you want here. So, by the way, uh, one of the most important thing when you start working is to go to certain address. And so there, are, there are several stuff. There is a navigation to go somewhere by address, by, uh, by address in memory. And also search, so it's a different thing. So to navigate, you use G. So when you press G, you have uh, such prompt and you could choose uh, an address and it will go there immediately. So how you could customize it? You could, it's, there is several windows, so mainly you need actually listing. Listing, it's a window where you have your addresses, you could have here like binary, but I just disabled it, but yeah, you, you could um, put it here. And you have your assembly language, some references. So it's kind of main window. And second window, it's the compile window where you will have your decompiled code in C language. So the most coolest thing that you could uh, you could customize everything here. So all this UI, it's totally customizable. So you just press this small button here and you could like uh, add here a lot of stuff like add new fields, remove them, make them bigger, smaller, you could drag them uh, back and forth. So for example, bytes, I want to enable this field. Okay, now I have bytes, now I can move it here. And uh, yeah, you see, it's, it's really a cool thing. So it's very um, customizable. Then, so after you open your Ghidra, and you decompiled it, you will have certain code which you which is which will be very hard to read. So where to start? Actually, the best way to start is to look for constants. For example, you may know that uh, in your product or in your game, maybe you decompile the game. There is certain uh, constants which you may may recognize. So you should look for these constants, and then you could start naming them. So because yeah, of course it's very hard to just simply find find out something out of uh, unknown variables. So you need to name such variables. So you find something which you know that it's kind of by using this product you may know it, and you could rename everything. So here. You could create structures. You could, uh, by default, there is no structures. So uh, some stuff, it could be a structure, but you just, uh, for example, this is created structure. In a row, it's uh, something not really understandable. So each, you, you should create data types, like edit data types for stuff to create uh, new structures and uh, name variables. So all variables here you could change, just right, right click at it and rename. So first your goal, when you just start working, you should name stuff which you could name, like mark to apply mark, markdown here. It's super important because then uh, Ghidra automatically will apply your name everywhere when this uh, value could be met in the code. So if you change the name of the variable here, for example, so you could like mind one, one, two, three. If you will change it, it will change it everywhere. So you could find it somewhere in other places. And uh, the cool thing that you could just uh, look for something with the search and search here much better than in, um, it's much better than in ID. IDA, A I D A, uh, disassembly. So it's really cool stuff. But yeah, first, first of all, you just uh, name um, name certain variables, create structures, name functions, and after that you could uh, start working and apply injections. So when you want to change something in your in in binary file, what do you want to do? You want to take certain assembly command and replace it with another command. So you should use something like um, 
you could create a DLL file, for example, which will store uh, assembly code, which will be replaced here, like with DLL inject uh, program. So you could just, uh, actually you could replace it just in a binary. So of course you could just use binary code and replace it manually. But the thing is that most of people who work with such uh, stuff, what they do, they replace certain command with a jump command. For example, this move, if we will replace it with a jump to the DLL file, to certain DLL file, like here I have. For example, let me show it. We have this place. Um, yeah. If you just click at certain place, it will mark uh, this place right in the code, which is really cool. So we have certain uh, place in the code which we want to change. For example, I want to add limit for speed, for character speed. So I, you first should choose in which place of the code you should apply your injection. For example, uh, you could be, I want just before this function start, right after uh, this uh, if condition ended. So what I do, I choose this address, I find it. So uh, this, uh, this address particular, this one. So you need, of course, to be able to read assembly code. And it's not really uh, hard. I mean, I mean, assembly code, it's much, e much easier than even C, C language syntax. Yeah, but it's uh, not easy to understand registers. So actually these oper operators, they're not hard, but uh, understanding registers and uh, you should not to overwrite them. You should uh, like read what you have here and do not uh, push stuff uh, which shouldn't be pushed to, to the calls. So what uh, we want to do, we want to create uh, a function which will uh, perform jump in certain place. For example, uh, I, I have here by this address, I by this address, so it's, uh, we have it here. By this address, I make DLL injection. So I replace this line, this move, I replace with my code, with this code. So first I'm checking, is it server one or not? And then I jump. If it's uh, server one, it, it jumps. So we insert here, um, this delay injection, it's by itself, it's a jump. It's a jump. And it's important thing which uh, you could be in, you could be trapped in it. So it's very dangerous thing. For example, to replace move operator with jump. Why? Because move takes only like three bytes, while jump takes five bytes. So if I'll just simply replace this move with a jump, it will eat next command. It will uh, like delete part of next command, certain bytes of it. So you should be very careful. And if you replace one command with a jump, you should uh, replace it. You should actually repeat both of them. This comment and next comment, you should repeat it in your assembly code. It's very important. So I, when if you will just replace this with jump, move with jump, you will also affect this line. So we need to take both of these lines. So we take uh, both of them and then we perform so when our program assembly common, uh, commands ends, it will jump to the next line. So if you use injection, uh, which uh, kind of replace one line, take two lines. It's important thing. Uh, because uh, other way you will have some glitches and it's very hard to understand why it's so I just, uh, I just had such problem recently. So yeah. You should know it. So yeah, you perform this. Uh, you could. So you. What you mean? What what you what we did? We took these two lines. But no, we took this line. We replaced uh, at this place. We made an injection to put these two lines. 
because we want to perform these two instructions. And then we made jump to the next one. So this way our jump do not delete uh, these two operators. So, and of course we made some our changes. So if, if it's server one, we will make minimum speed. And then we also, of course, at the end, after our custom code, we also apply these instructions from here. Because if we, we, we always want to do not break the code. It's important thing. So it's kind of basic foundation, what you want to do in uh, uh, while disasming something. Of course, Ghidra, it's huge program with lots of different stuff. It's very customizable and it will take years to learn it. And uh, yeah, by the way, please note that some of options in Ghidra, they are not accessible in a code browser. So for example, you see here tool, tool option, and there are limited options. So to be able to get there, you should close it and go here. So here you could edit tool options and here tools will have, for example, um, use inverted colors. So that's, that's why you could, for example, make a Ghidra, um, make it bl black, dark mode, which I like, for example. But it dark mode has some uh, problems too, but as Ghidra, it's very, yeah, you see now it's dark mode. It's very, um, very active development software. So I think in, in time, these problems will be eventually uh, done. Yeah, just study, study, study um, Ghidra. It has lots of different stuff. And um, uh, in time, in time, uh, it will be easier. When you just start to work with it, it might uh, be hard. Uh, but uh, in time, you will be um, very good. So basically, you just need to be able to read assembly code. Uh, you need to find certain places. Of course, easiest way to find something in Ghidra, it's uh, not only some constants, but also text stuff. So, for example, if there are some strings, so functions like this um, in C language, so they have some text. So it's very easy to find such places. Next easy spots is to find some ASCII text in the program. So your favorite uh, place in all programs is ASCII because uh, this text it's uh, in binary mode, it's still preserved. So it's very easy to understand what certain stuff doing if you just uh, read it. So for example, this is uh, messages for the error messages in server. So this file, this place is there, it's very easy to call them, to, to, uh, to start Mark, to start applying your markdown. And um, so it's basically two things. It's uh, constant variables, like, uh, like some numbers. And second one, it's uh, text. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video will help you to get into Ghidra, do good stuff for the world. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Put like and write some comments, ask some questions. I'll be glad to communicate with you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.